she's the kind that you'd find dishes for the whole day not done you'd find the house is not cleaned but for sure you know your kids are well taken care of so i think i just have to turn a blind eye to work that was not done but for sure i know the kids were well taken care of Hi guys and welcome back to Mommy Tales. So today I'm featuring a mom. She's a career mom. She has an 8 to 5 job. She has two young children, both of them under 3 and she's currently pregnant with her third born. She's studying for her master's degree. She runs a biashara and she says she's able to achieve balance in her life because of a key supporter in her life and this is her house girl. And she has a very good relationship with her house girl. So I just wanted to hear from her about how everything works out well between her her house, her children, and the house girl. She talks specifically about the role that the house girl plays in helping her achieve the balance that she's experiencing today. So here's Catherine with her story. So Catherine Jeroge is uh, married. Um, she's a mother of two or three-ish. When I call three-ish, is uh, a one-year-old. Uh, sorry, the first one is three-year-old. Uh, second born is one year eight months and uh, the third one is loading yes uh, I'm an employee a full-time employee uh, I'm a student doing my MBA and yeah I run a, a startup yeah that I work on anytime I have my free time yes um, yes that's coffee For me it has been, uh, I would not even call it hard, it has been a fun and um, enjoyable journey. Uh, I became a mother in 2017 at 25 years, that's when I got my first born. And uh, my husband was very, very supportive because I remember before that, uh, for the three years we were trying to get a baby and I think all, all the time he kept on saying, I think we're not in this marriage for, you know, kids. Kids is just uh, an extra blessing from God. If they come well and good, if they don't, uh, then we enjoy life together. So for us, it was a blessing because I remember it was a fast and uh, prayer that was answered by God. And yeah, we got our first born in December 2017. Um, a year later, one year, one month later, we got our second born, who is also a girl. Yeah, she, those two girls have really different characters. The first one is really polite. The second one, I think, is just a copy character of her mother. So, yeah, and we have the third one loading. So, yeah, expected next year May, and we are happy. Yes, so my motherhood journey has been, um, for me, it has been easy. Let me just call it what it is. It has been easy because I really have a supportive house girl who we met in 2017 before I was a mother. She used to uh, run a daycare that I had then. And she was very good with kids because I remember then the kids used to run after her when it's lunchtime, when they want food. So they always used to run after her, calling her name, Shalvin, Shalvin, food, you know. And I could tell, uh, if genuinely kids love you, you're a good person. So after the daycare thing, after I gave birth, I decided to bring her to the house. And yeah, she had left in between. She also, also got pregnant when my firstborn was around uh, uh, an year or so. Yeah, I had a few in between. And I can tell you it's hard when your heart is not settled somewhere. But um, she came back when I was almost coming back to work after my second maternity leave. And yeah, she has been very, very supportive. I can tell you, like over the weekend, I was away for like three days and I didn't drop my kids to my mom. She, she was just in the house with the kids. Yeah, so I can tell you she's, she's the best support system I have, yes. I can tell you, like my, my first mom has not joined school, but she's able to, you know, uh, she, she actually bought a chart for them. When she went for one of her off on Sundays, she came with a chart, the ABCD chart. So they've really learned the ABCD, uh, you know, sometimes she'll tell me, Mommy, okay, Rudy, bring us coloring books, bring us pencils. So I can tell you my kid, my firstborn has, you know, she's able to tell the, the you know, identify the uh, uh, buzz sounds. 
she's able to identify colors and correctly identify so for me i know she does a lot with my kids uh, there's a time i'll just come in home uh, impromptu i just find them somewhere the three of them so her and my two daughters uh, you know outside so playing around with mud water so I can tell you she's really hands-on with the kids. Um, let's say if I'm late to come home, uh, I'll find kids fed, I'll find them ready for bed. So she really goes out of her way. She's the kind that you'd find dishes for the whole day not done. You'd find the house is not cleaned. But for sure, you know your kids are well taken care of. So I think I just have to turn a blind eye to work that was not done. But for sure, I know the kids were well taken care of, yes. So this is about choosing what is important for you when you're employing a house Yes, yes. Right now my kids are really important because I need to come home to a point, uh, I need to come to work and hustle and know that my kids are safe, you know. I don't need to keep on calling home, but by the way I rarely call back home. Uh, she will call me telling me, maybe mommy come with this uh, during, when you're coming back. But uh, I rarely call home because I know the kids are okay, you know. So I choose. I choose, um, I choose my kids being okay over, you know, housework. Housework, my husband always tells me, uh, don't mind about beds not made, don't mind about dirty dishes. It's something that, you know, we'll always come home to and do. And f uh, truth be told, if you come home and, you know, the work is not done, uh, my hubby will always help maybe doing dishes, I can do something else, because I know she's also tired, so she can actually rest maybe with the kids, yeah. So, you know, I look at her and um, the, the effort, the time she gives, you know, to our household. I just look at it and say, this is the, you know, this is the amount of uh, effort I want to give my employer. Because I can tell you for sure, everything she does, she does it wholeheartedly. She does it with all her effort. Because uh, let's say, for example, I'm leaving uh, to go to work in the morning. Maybe the kids are still asleep, so she'll come and tell me, what are you doing? So she'll offer to carry my handbag to the car, you know, those things. So for me, I just look at her and the dedication, because let's say, for example, like last weekend, I, I was not at home. So I just told her, you'll not go for your off, I need you to stay in. And I know she, she wanted to move houses. So yeah, she will postpone whatever she wants, you know, she has, just to be there for those kids. Yeah. Is she a scholar or a boarder? She's a boarder, but what happens, I give her her off on Saturday. So she, oh, Saturday she comes back on Sunday. So she has her own house in Nairobi? Yeah, yeah. I actually encouraged her to get her own house because I told her, um, being in one environment can also, you know, burn you out. Why don't you get your own place and uh, on Saturdays you can always leave, go to your own house, you know, take a rest, you know, you need your also, you know, your own time alone, eh? And then now she comes back either on Saturday evening or Monday morning. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Honestly, it's what will work between the two of you. You know, there's no script that we would follow. Because uh, if I pick out a very good example, uh, my nanny is, uh, how would I say, she's not an early riser. So I will never wake her up. So sometimes she'll wake up at seven, sometimes she'll wake up at eight. Depends on when the kids wake up. So, but she will prefer to work a bit late in the night, which I'm okay with, by the way. If I wake up before her, for example, I need to leave early before, for work, I'll just prepare my own breakfast. And um, she told me not to be cooking the kids' porridge because I cook it, they don't drink. So <laughs> that I don't do. So I know I'll have a hard time even in December. So we'll just be feeding, I think, on Wita Bix where she goes. She told me, okay, pick a water to have a pindi. I don't know how I, I cook the porridge. So yeah, I fix my own things. So I really don't pressure her. So there's one time she came back and told me uh, the only thing that makes her tired is washing clothes. So I just went out of my way and bought a washing machine. Yeah, so, you know, we have those conversations. So I tell her, do you need help? Sometimes I'll see she has a lot of work. I get a day back. So sometimes maybe the house needs uh, a general cleaning and I'm busy, I'll just bring in a day bag who will do the thorough cleaning, yeah. So you just have to find, a, you know, something that works for both of you. Of course, you will see some of her weaknesses, but don't really, you know, put pressure onto that. 
um, just look for a way to help her around her weaknesses. Yes. So after the ninth month, I know she had a kidogo saving, so I just told her, you go rest. Um, just in case of anything, you call me. I was ready to bail her out, because she, she also bailed me out as a first-time mother. Because you know, when she came, she was also not a first-time mother herself. She's a bit young, by the way, but she, was, she also had a firstborn. So at least she really helped me, you know, uh, bring up my firstborn. So she had to go. She had to go for like three, four months. So she came back. So she had to take the kids to the mom because she also needed the job back. Eh? She was a bit, she was struggling a bit, so she needed to come back. So we just have had a word with the mom, and uh, yeah, we also support the mom at home just to make sure that she's not, uh, you know, bombarded with the two kids because she has two kids. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you, she's my role model. She came back with one heart. I remember when she left, in between her coming back, when I had now another nanny, she actually came visiting. She would come visiting with her baby, uh, now has, uh, the baby she got. She would come visiting just to say hi and to check on my firstborn then, because I didn't have my secondborn. So for me, that was a bit encouraging. It means it's someone who fits in the family, you know? For someone to come back, it means her heart was home. So when she came back, by the way, I was so sure this is what I wanted because I knew at least my second born would be, you know, in safe hands because you see an infant, eh? you really don't want to leave. Your, your guts tell you this is the right person. And I can tell you the difference between my first born and my second born. So I think uh, when she left my first born, I got a nanny who would expose my kid because where I live is a bit cold to, to cold water. Maybe when she was doing laundry, she would do it with her. So my firstborn always has issues for, you know, chest, those things. Eh? And because my secondborn has never gone through another nanny, she's super healthy. She gets a cold, it will never take her down. You can tell the difference between the two, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, how would I explain? Uh, I'm the kind of person who will wake up in the morning uh oh, oh you know I, I really check on the kids if they're okay you know in the morning so i'll just wake up prepare myself maybe pop into their room uh once in a while and then i know they're okay when they wake up nanny is there changes feeds uh so when i come to work my my whole you know mind is at work because back home i know my kids are okay and if anything goes wrong she'll always call me and uh, she's done the basic first aid eh? so if they fall down she's able to take care of them you know those things so um i really don't have a problem in terms of baby feeling okay um i can tell you about school because uh yeah so i come to work uh until around five i go back home i find my kids are okay so I step in now to babysit, maybe she will fix dinner or I'll fix dinner with them in the kitchen, something like that, yeah. Um, and also the daddy. The daddy is very, how would I say, he, he's very, uh, he's very key because I can tell you, both my kids stopped breastfeeding at around six months, just by themselves, yeah. So when they stopped, the daddy picks it up from there at night. So I, I can sleep the whole night after they stop breastfeeding. So he will wake up at night, if he needs to change diapers, he changes and he also feeds them. So at least I can tell you, I, I, the first six months are a bit, you know, um, not tough, but uh, that's when I have to put in a lot of effort. And then uh, daddy comes in at night. So at least even after a very long day, I'm able to rest in, you know, during the night. Uh, so I think when I went back to school, I just prepared her and I told her, uh, I started off in Jan. So I told her um, for the next two years, I'll be in school and uh, I'll have evening classes. So this is what I need you to do, you know, uh, maybe twice or thrice in a week. I'll come in late or maybe have a class on Saturday. So I'll not be here. So we discussed, do you need help? She says no. 
she doesn't need help she's okay she just needs to rearrange her schedule just to you know fit me being away and I can tell you so right now we're having online classes in school so I don't go to school anymore but we I'm still in school so I'll just lock myself in the room and when my kids are knocking at my door she'll just tell them apana mamia kojobe so she'll keep them away I'm done with class if I need to do exams I'll just drop them maybe at my mom's for a week with her so I can say um, for me because we already had uh, a schedule that was working I think even transitioning to school it's not something that I can say is uh, it was difficult it just you know things just took a turn that was, was supposed to take yeah I actually give her airtime if she wants I buy all her personal uh, you know uh, stuff that she wants if she goes to the hospital I'll take care of all her bills um, yeah uh, I don't know uh, if I go to the market uh, you know I'm going to shop for clothes I'll also count her in like for me she's part of family the other day I told you I was away so I think I just bought everyone a pair of shoes including her so for me she's I, I take her like a sister you know someone who is there to yeah help yeah like the other day we came up with a savings account for her so I just told her um, the fact that you didn't go to high school please don't let your kids go down that drain because sometimes uh, as much as people don't want to admit education can take you places yeah so we came up with some sort of saving plan where yeah I pay her maybe half the other half we save if she needs it she'll come and tell me but I told her let your kids you know just make it through education yeah and she's doing quite well in, on it, yeah. Yeah, so that is Catherine's story. I hope you've been able to pick something, you've been encouraged, you've been inspired, and that you'll apply one or two things in your own situation. If you have a story to share as well, please get in touch with me and I'd be able to share such inspiring and encouraging stories, hoping that yours is one of them. Thank you so much for watching and remember to subscribe to this channel where I share inspiring motherhood stories. Thank you and see you in the next video.